Hey guys, welcome to another video on the Mi 11X, the Poco F3 and the Redmi K40. Now today we are talking about the complete review of the latest OnePlus 8T based OxygenOS port for this wonderful device. It's been more than 24 hours that I've been using it. I've had a couple of charge cycles. I have the games installed. I am using it with my primary SIM card. So this review will give you the answer if you should use this as your daily driver or not. But before we get into all of that, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find a link to our Telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other. So join us there. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so we did have an install video on it and now we have a complete review. We are talking about the OnePlus 8T port based on Android 11. This is the Open Beta 7. It is an initial build for Mi 11X. As far as the bugs are concerned, we have face unlock and Google Assistant not working to OK Google. Those are the only two bugs that I have experienced, but there are some minor glitches here and there which you should pay attention to. But first things first, we will have a look at the ROM and we will decide how amazing this is. Now this right here is full fledged Oxygen OS, the complete real deal and it is working as smooth as butter. So the first thing that I would like to bring your attention towards is you do get a low brightness fix with this particular build and it does fix the you know brightness being very very high even on the lowest settings it does fix that but i still feel that brightness needs even more optimization but leaving that aside to the left of course you have your google feed the whole ui is super smooth super fluid and if you flash the splash screen mod which you know gives you a oneplus splash screen and you hand over this phone to someone they will think that this is indeed a oneplus 8t at least from the software part now other things to take care of, I did try flashing ANX camera, even the ANX camera which works on the 9R build didn't work on this one. So you do have the Gcam which is available in that particular group and the good thing is all the three lenses are working fine. I did try night mode and portrait mode although it is not super amazing like the ANX camera but it is working fine. So you know when you use a particular ROM as a daily driver on your personal device a lot of things do start mattering to you. Especially the charging speed, the battery backup, the critical features like voice over LTA, voice over Wi-Fi. And I'm happy to report that this particular build is doing almost everything absolutely right. Not only that, even in the gaming section, you do have 90 FPS by default. So you don't need to, you know, go ahead and install a config file or a Magisk module or anything of that sort. Everything works as expected. Even the OnePlus applications like contacts, dialer, call recording, everything is working great. So let's quickly go to settings over here and let's go to about. You do see it says it's a Snapdragon 876-128. It says the triple camera configuration over here, 120 Hertz fluid AMOLED and it does say that it is a OnePlus 8T. Although it is the Mi 11X, the Poco F3 or the Redmi K40 which watch we have here. So let's start taking a look at the build first and then we will talk about the bugs and things that are working fine. So the moment you boot into the screen, you're greeted by very, very few applications, just like a OnePlus device. To the left, of course, you have Google Feed, which works absolutely smooth. From the top to bottom, you do have all the quick tiles which work just fine. I have enabled a few. And if you actually go to the screen recorder, and click over here, you will see that it has the 60 FPS mode. The highest bitrate is 24 Mbps and the full resolution is what it records at. The audio source can be internal or external. So unfortunately, you cannot have internal and external audio both. And as you can see, when you're recording the screen, there is no lag, no jitter, no stutter whatsoever. So pretty neat stuff there by oneplus and the team who have ported this because it is working absolutely fine and as you can see over here the playback of this screen recording is working absolutely smooth as well so as far as the screen recording is concerned i am pretty impressed and it's working great now apart from this if you go to the edit menu you do have your additional features like dolby atmos over here 
So let's go ahead and add Dolby Atmos and you have message enhance dual phone. So that's an ANX camera feature and you have all the basic options that you would get in a OnePlus device. So you do have screen casting and all the other things as well. You do have the new Zen mode over here. So you can go ahead and enable it. I'm not going to do that. Otherwise I'll have to stop the shoot for 20 minutes and I don't intend to do that, right? So as you can see over here, the gaming mode and all the other features are present. And if you actually go to settings, you actually go to Wi-Fi network, you have your usual stuff of things and five gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz are working absolutely okay. You do have something called as contactless payments over here, but the moment you click on that, it actually crashes Moving on, if you go to display, you have adaptive brightness, you have screen calibration, refresh rate, you can set it to the maximum locked 120 hertz refresh rate, which is really, really neat. You do have vision comfort, dark mode, vibrant color effect. You have your always on display over here, which works really, really well. The canvas AOD and stuff is working absolutely fine. Now, as I have said in a lot of reviews, it doesn't really make any sense for me to go to each and every settings option and explain it to you because, hey, you guys are grown-ups, you've seen these ROMs and OSs so many times in the past. So it's just a waste of time for me and you. But in customization, you do have your basic customization available and it works absolutely fine. Sound and vibration, you do have your system sound option over here and you do have your Dolby audio over here as well. So let's have a look at Dolby Atmos. There you go. Right. You can disable and enable it and it works fine according to me. I am not much of an audiophile so I can't really comment on the experience but so far it has been pretty decent. You have buttons and gestures, apps and notifications, security and lock screen. The only bug that is present over here is face unlock doesn't work and I hope they will fix it. The fingerprint scanner works absolutely fine. You do have your digital well-being and parental controls. You have your Google services over here. You do have your utilities in which you have the app locker over here. So add apps. Say for example, you go ahead and add Accu battery. Let's go to Accu battery now. There you go. Got it. So app locker is working absolutely fine as well. You have your pocket mode, schedule power on and off. You have your parallel apps and a OnePlus Lab in which you do have DC dimming as well. So more or less the utilities section doesn't really have a lot and in system you have your OTG storage and all the basic options. So that covers your settings part in this particular ROM and as far as games are concerned, you do have the Fnatic mode and a dedicated gaming mode as you can see over here. So if you actually go to the settings of the gaming mode, you do have your ton of options over here, including graphics optimization and all the options I'm happy to report in the gaming mode are working fine. In Call of Duty Mobile, you are getting ultra FPS and it is working absolutely okay. And in BGMI, you're getting 90 FPS smooth. So that is working fine as well. And yes, there is a dedicated gaming review on this particular ROM that is coming really, really soon. Now, let me go ahead and tell you about my personal experience. Basic things that you use every day. Banking applications working fine. Safety net, no problem at all. I've tried Netflix and Amazon Prime HD. Wideone L1 works okay. No issues at all. While making calls on Wi-Fi, sometimes I have to dial twice because on the first dial, I don't really get the audio of person whom I'm calling. So sometimes like, you know, one out of every eight to 10 attempts, I did have issues with calls, but otherwise the network connectivity, the internet speed and everything else has been working absolutely fine. Now, one major drawback for me on this particular ROM was the battery life. Although do remember, I was using this with always on display, but if you have a look over here, so we've been on battery charge for five hours and it says seven hours left. And if you have a look, we've just had one hour and 45 minutes of screen on time. Right. So the battery life in my experience, even after two charge cycles is not that great, not that best. And I really hope they will improve it someday. But for now, it will get you through most of the day if you're not a really, really power user. On the split side, the charging speed has been really, really great and I've not had any issues with the charging. So more or less, it's a mixed experience. If you game a lot and stuff, it doesn't really heat up that much, but the battery life is okay-ish for me, not something that is really, really amazing. 
Now with that said, let's also talk about the multitasking in this particular ROM. It looks absolutely beautiful. You see these shortcuts at the bottom. It works really, really great and it allows you to quickly move between any applications. And if you press and hold, you do have the option of locking the application into memory and split screen. So multitasking is a breeze as well. And even if you go ahead and talk about the Android 10 gestures, they are butter smooth. They are so smooth. Just look at this. I, I really like what OnePlus has been doing with Android and it is it is just amazing. Now that doesn't stop us from talking about the benchmark numbers to judge this particular ROM. So let's go ahead and talk about the CPU throttle test first. All right. Now, because this ROM comes with a perf kernel, you do have CPU throttling to 81% of its max performance and an average score of 194 443 GIPS. Now, next up, we will talk about Geekbench. So let's go ahead and have a look at the score for Geekbench over here. 974 single core, 2989 multi-core. I know it is low, but it is not the worst. We also managed to run Antutu benchmark over here, which will give us some more insight. 595,426, that is the score that we have over here. So as far as the benchmarks are concerned, it's, it's decent, it's not super strong, super amazing, but overall the performance is pretty, pretty great. So all in all, if you ask me about this Oxygen OS port for the OnePlus 8T, it's really, really amazing. The smoothness is next level. Almost all the OnePlus features are working absolutely fine. The gaming is okay. The charging speed is okay. You can use Gcam for cameras. Banking applications work fine. This port from me gets a big thumbs up. You can definitely go ahead and try it and let me know what are your thoughts and what are the additional bugs that you found. Now remember there is a gaming review coming for this ROM and I'm going to soon try the OnePlus 9R port on which I'm going to apply all the fixes and maybe make a daily driver video for that. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.